Alright, so I'm going to show you how we can create a flow of execution that's going to handle a lot of events using the level blueprint. So uh, to do this, you need to know how to work with wire and how to work with blueprint. So when I right click on an empty space in here, I have this little context menu. So this context menu is just a gathering of every function that you can find like if you're looking for math operation you can just click and type math so you have like addition of vector 4 you have a get abs like you have every math operation that you can find if you're looking to blur between two value you can blur between vector with between transform rotation uh, f you have everything that you need in here in the context menu if you don't have it you can create something that's gonna add to the context menu. For example, I'm going to show you a custom event. So custom event is an event that I'm going to create myself, uh, an event that doesn't exist in this context menu, right? So I'm going to right click and type in custom event. All right, so I have this little red box, the red node in here. So I'm going to give it a name. Um, uh, not not custom mode, uh, fire. Fire something. All right. So this event is something that is going to be fired from this from this little node. So you have this execution pin in here. So the right one, the white one, sorry, is here to create this flow of execution. Okay. So from this, if I call this little custom event which is basically a function if i call this function what's gonna happen so what's gonna happen is that i'm going to print print something this something will print uh hey i'm a node called fire fire something A little typo here. Okay, hey, I'm a custom node called fire something. So this is the name of the of the custom event. So here, you have this little pink data pin. So this thing is an input pin, input pin. So everything that you can find on the left side of a function of a node is an input so this w this is what this function needs to be to be working properly so if I just set nothing in here nothing is going to print because this string this function needs a string to work so if I get back and type um, fire something compile save I'm going to use this little trigger box to show you um, Beginning of a lap. I'm going to call my custom event, so I'm just going to drag a wire to call my function and type fire something. Okay, call it function fire something. I'm going to compile, save, go back to my game and press play. So if I enter my little box, I'm going to see hey, I'm a custom node called fire something. Okay. So you can get the point. So if I'm want my fire something to be called with a, a default value, I just can click on it and go on my details panel in here and click window. If you don't have it, you just can click window and select detail here. All right. So I'm going to click and click on this little plus new parameter. So this is an input pin that this custom event needs to be work to, to work. Sorry. So I'm going to give it a name. Print text, and I'm going to set it a string. Here is the type of the variable. So you can select string, compile, save. So if I drag this input this output sorry wire to the input wire of the 
spin of this print string function I'm going to have to set a, va a value in here because if I just press play and I enter here nothing is going nothing is going to, to print on the screen because this value is empty you have nothing to work with right so if I just enter hey my value is not empty press enter save play if I enter it up hey my value is not empty because this function sending a value to this pink data wire uh, pin in here and when I enter this trigger box first something is called first something is going to execute a print string with his value the value that I enter here so I can have multiple value in here as you can see in here which is the text color if I want to change it okay if I want to change the duration which is a float when I just hover my mouse in here I see the name and the type of, of the variable here is a linear color structure here is a boolean boolean 2 and string but we're going to cover the variable type and everything related variable related just after this video so I think you get the points so you can work and you see the change the value is here and the color is what I set it inside this little pink box in here so I'm going to cover the variable type and every variable related stuff just after this video so see you on the next one